right. Well, thank you very much. Sleepy Town, music to my ears. I'll tell you that. Well, then you might just fit in because most of the folks who stay here are the same way. They don't like the hustle and bustle much. Uh, is there a market at all? Um, shops, places of the like around here? There's a street around the corner that has a few of them, but we don't have any, any huge market area here like some towns do. Uh, thank you. She nods and eventually goes back and engages in conversation with the other folk that she was before. Leaves you at the bar with some uh, ale and wine and a night full of a pocket full of dreams. So this is like a Swiss Switzerland like bank, essentially, right? Like people go and they make their deposits here, and it's pretty like secure. Is that kind of what we're getting at, or seems that way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Even from just your outside look at the building, and the fact that your rooms are on the third floor, you can sort of guess that the upper floors are for hotel, and the bottom floor is for much more serious stuff. Now. How much would Isaac know about how this operates? And I ask because I want to see if I can find out if um, they can share information about their clients. So simply uh, like if Faust has a deposit here and I probably not what it is, but if they can divulge if he's a client or if even that is top secret. Make a history check <clears throat> because I need to make this group roll dice sometimes. I'm going to assume that my family doesn't have a deposit box here. They do not. Yeah, 13. They have, they have royal coffers and the like to take care of their own business. They have no need, especially with this being so far away. Yeah. Uh, 13? Yeah. Um, your memories when you think back are always just that little bit muddled when you think back to before the last few years of your life. But from what you can kind of pick out of the slight haze that's there, you don't remember your father ever having any business here. Okay. That's not to say it didn't happen or that it does not happen currently, but at least back then you really, like the reason you don't know a ton about this town is because you, neither you nor your father, you don't really remember them having a ton of dealings here. Even though it's relatively close, it's only a few hours away. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I know what I'm doing, but... Uh Tessian's going to finish up his wine and then propose to Thea. Uh, do you want to perhaps look around the shops a bit before we retire for the evening? Not that propose to Thea. <laughs> oh wow. God. An idea. Propose a course of action. Oh, Tessian. <laughs> Not... We're already engaged, you guys. What does it matter? Reproposing re to rekindle the spark. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's on board with that, especially since she kind of knows what Isaac and Karash are up to already. Seems to make sense. So, you guys are going to sweep the town, or what do you... What? We'll start with Isaac and Karash, since I think Tessian and Thies will be short. Er. <laughs> Karash, uh, I still want to check out the... And I'm talking a little bit lower voice. Uh, I want to check out the area, ask for a Dragonborn, but I'd like to make a pit stop uh, by uh, the bank. Uh, if you wouldn't mind accompanying me. I'm not an indie car, but sure, we can make a pit stop. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah, yes, that, that's just fine. I like the idea of him riding you, though. Like, you carry him on your shoulders. A pit stop was derived from medieval times, the phrase. Yes. <laughs> As you all know. The, 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 pa the, uh, the punished would be like, stop throwing me in the pit. Yeah. You stop when you get to a pit. Pit, stop. I don't want to be in the pit anymore. <laughs> I'll stop being a bad person. Um, okay. Uh, it's inside the same building, so it did not take yeah. you long to get there. Um, mm. But you head off from this kind of main entryway where it seems like people are allowed to congregate. And as you kind of round the corner on the first floor, going past the stairs that lead up to the hotel rooms, um, you quickly see a very different type of lobby where there is a desk with somebody at it who you might be able to inquire of, but behind them is a wall of sorts, but it's bar to bar, bar to bar, wall, <laughs> ceiling to floor bars with um, that look very thick. These are not like standard city jail cell 
toss a guy in there when he's drunk and hold him for a night. These are like three to four inch thick, reinforced, can't fit between them in any way. Like these are serious bars that separate you from this lobby and whatever rooms are all behind it. But there's a receptionist. You, there is, you yes. Mentioned. Okay. I, there's a quest in Witcher 3 where you go into a bank to make a withdrawal and the entire quest is just the bank giving you like the runaround for like 20 minutes. They're just like, oh, this will be at window two. And you go to window two, like, ah, it's at window five. And that's the whole quest. So I imagine that being here. So the Witcher is just like real life. Yeah, yeah, literally Spoilers. like that's why that quest is in there. It's yeah. hilarious. Um, so Ooh, you uh, want a checking account. We're going to have to go see Tim over there in accounting. That's literally the, the whole quest. <laughs> it's genius. Oh, God, I haven't thought of an excuse yet, uh, but this is real time. We're there. Uh, it, uh, can you tell me about the receptionist? Elderly gentleman, half-elf looking. Not as elderly as the bartender was, but maybe, you know, as far as, like, half-elves go, 60s or 70s, which is not as old as human 60s or 70s, but enough that he's got a, a pretty decent streak of gray hair and even a little bit of receding hairline just across the front. Not bald, not even like balding, but just a little bit where you can tell like he's getting up there in years. Good, uh, howdy there, sir. Good evening to you. <laughs> Man looks up from the desk, looks at you and the dragonborn beside you. Goes, yes. Well, I was hoping I could make an inquiry. Uh, I I work for a fella, and I wanted to. See if I could check on his on his holdings, but I wanna I wanna make sure it's uh, being processed and it's all uh, in the by the by and by. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He says <laughs> the by the by and by and by. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, bye, Karash bye, is bye, considering bye, if he actually has a hold on the common language or not at this point. <laughs> and he does not. <laughs> um, he kind of gives you this sort of withering look, and he says, you know, we get a lot of folks who just kind of wander over here who are staying at the hotel, and I, I get it. It's all connected. I understand. But uh, that's not really how it works. Either you have things here, and you're meant to be here, or you're not. We don't disclose information to anyone. All right, I understand. So if I was curious as to a family member having a holding, you could not divulge. I could not. You'd have to come back with them. Now, if they were here with you, it could be a different story, but it's not just enough to have someone say that they're related and they're allowed entry. What if you could just tell me if they have a holding here? I don't want to see it. I just want to be able to go back, report to my ward, that it is indeed by the by and by. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. He's just glad he's not I, in your shop for this. I'm, I'm just going to like wander off to the market and come back and y'all in jail because <laughs> he's just mouth about the buys and the buys and the buys. <laughs> you never had your dad give you the talk about the buys and the buys and the bees? <laughs> He says, sir, that would be a breach of privacy. One of the things that our clients like so much about us is the fact that they can have things here and it's not known to anybody else. It's not even just money. It's a lot of other personal or valuable effects. So, unfortunately, no, we cannot do that. I respect your integrity. <laughs> <laughs> now Mike's having an aneurysm. Are aneurysms contagious? Is that? Oh, my God. I feel like they're contagious. <sighs> Today they are. All right, Karash. Well, it looks like the master <clears throat> hold-ins are is certainly on the buy. Why, why don't we go <laughs> ahead and get that all out of here? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Thank you, Karash, for accompanying me there. Uh, is there somewhere you would like to go now? What what language was that? Oh, we'll get you there eventually. It's uh, common. Uh, Grail might know more about this particular uh, dialect. I, oh Except God. probably not, because she speaks English <laughs> still. Because <laughs> she's not an idiot. <laughs> I, I do not think it is a good idea to 
ask about other people's businesses. Business? Yes. Why 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 did we do that? Karash, come here. I'll tell you why. And I look around and make sure no one's there. Oh god, let's not look there, suspicious. I'll wait until they're gone. And I say, Crash, I was thinking if my father has holdings here, perhaps we uh, that might mean something. If we could get our hands on them, that could be huge. I don't know how we could go about doing that. Uh, security seems great, but I just wanted to learn a little bit more uh, and see what was here. If this is a big bank, it's close to Timberbrook, I thought there might be a chance. But if your father is very wealthy and very powerful, can't he just have them lie to you? Oh, well, I, I'm, gl- I'm collecting information. What if he had sa- if he had confirmed that my father was here, oh, that would be a step in the right direction. As for now, though, I am afraid we're at, uh, let's see, what's a phrase you will understand? Uh, we have no information now. <laughs> As the old saying goes. <laughs> yeah, we, we have no information now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yes. We, uh, did, did, did you still wish to go shopping? Oh, by all means, Crash, yes. That, that, okay. We can go but, shopping and we'll ask around for any Dragonborn just because the bartender didn't see any doesn't mean no one else in the town has. Very, yes, very true. Where, where, where did you want to go? Uh, and I look around and like, what do I see? Is there a sign that's like, shop? <laughs> the old shoppy. <laughs> Well, Tessie and Thea head out, and as you head back outside the building, um, around the corner where the bartender described, you do see what appears to be like the most micro version of what you saw in Lycidian that you've ever seen. It is basically a street with maybe about a half dozen, maybe like eight shops on both sides of it. Um, A couple of them seem to be proper buildings. A couple of them are more like the street properties that you saw a lot of in Lycidian with like tents or canvases over the top. Um, A lot of them seem to be kind of winding down for the day as it gets to be about five o'clock now where you guys are at. Um, But there are still, like most of them are still open if not maybe just packing up for the evening. Um, Some of them are selling food. There's at least one that seems to have the sparsest version of adventuring gear type stuff that you've ever seen. Um, a couple have, I don't want to say poorly crafted weapons, but not the best <laughs> either. Like they're, they're functional, they'll work. They don't look bad, but you're also like, yeah, these are not top of the line stuff. They must not have somebody here who makes them because this is clearly not the best work. Um, so we'll catch up with their group and that's what you guys will see when you go outside and we'll, like 10 minutes after them. I just tell Crash, oh, why don't we just, uh, we'll, we can hit those shops one by one. The little stalls, and I tell you what, I'll buy you a turkey leg for your troubles. Does one of these shops, does it actually sell food, or I assumed it was like fresh produce? Uh, one of them does appear to have meats of some kind. Okay, so fair enough. Until you get there. I, I, I prefer fish, but okay. Oh, we can see, and as we're walking over, oh, we can see if they have fish, we, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Be on the lookout for some rhubarb. Yep. You've already <laughs> bought plenty of that. You don't need any more. Did I keep it all? I guess I, I did bring the box. No, I think I dropped the boxes because we ended up doing something, didn't we? Well, you didn't bring them with you to the teleportation circle, whatever happened between yep. uh, the rescue and the hasty departure. So there's some more yeah. in my city. And someone's Rotting. gotten free rhubarb on this day. I'm pretty sure rhubarb keeps for a long time by itself. Yeah, maybe it's bitter as hell. Go back. Who knows? Next time you go to my city and you can check it out. Um, Tessian he is just kind of walking alongside you as you guys check out the shops Um, she says to you well it's certainly a quaint market kind of nice it's small but feels oddly familiar and Tessian said well I find that there's something uh, refreshingly same about people selling their goods, uh, trying to make a living. You know, there's a, a sense of community about it, no matter where you are. 
It's bigger in Lycidian, of course, but, you know, something something to buy, something new to gain. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll kind of walk up to a shop, I guess. Uh, he's kind of interested in the adventuring goods. Um, he wants to make sure that uh, he has enough materials to write stuff. So if they've got, like, um, like the charcoal pencils or things like that, um, just to make sure he can always write down all the stuff that we're getting on the scrolls. Um, okay. Uh, this shop is not especially well stocked, but as far as something basic like that, they do have what you're looking for, and it's okay. extremely cheap to the point where I'm tempted not even to quote you copper for it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, some charcoal, maybe a couple extra pencils, um, a fresh quill, and some parchment, perhaps. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, that, just just some basic stuff, just to make sure that we're topped off, before, you know, for that that kind of thing. There is like a cost to it, but we're not going to sweat it because it's. You know, a small amount, and we're already past that level. So <laughs> I'll just let them know that this is my favorite store in the Citadel, and I'm sure it'll all be free. Yeah, put it on your tab. Mm -hmm. Just charge it to Castle Black. Yeah, yeah. bill me. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess is there. So I know those are some of the shops. Is there any place that does have like, I don't know, little no novelty things or jewelry or books or just like something frivolous uh, to to look at things like that? Um, there is one shop that sort of catches your and Thea's eye, which is there are not a lot of artisans on this street. It's primarily food goods and the like and seemingly things that the people of the town would need on a day-to-day -day basis for the most part mm -hmm. to get by. Um, but there are a couple of people that are trying to sell something that's besides that. Besides the Adventuring Gear one, uh, the one that really does stick out is somebody is selling books of some kind. And as you approach that stall, it's books of illustrations not nearly as good as either of yours it's but it's also not crudely done like they're they're decent the biggest problem is honestly not the talent so much as the subject matter because it appears to be just drawings of people walking around town doing so like it's a person who's not gotten out of the city much so their drawings are not of exotic and exciting things but rather the mundane life which is still sort of an art into one of itself but it's not like whoa check out this art of this like fully rendered dragon because that doesn't yeah. Have any of that in it. Um, well, okay. Uh, I mean, Tessian's at least interested. Um, he'll kind of flip through them. Um, are they broken up into like subjects in some way or, or categories? Like, is it just random people or? For the most part, there seems to be two varieties. One of them involves people walking around town or, you know, like some portraits of different folks. You're not sure if this is family or just strangers or what that's about. And the other is more like still lifes. It's sort of fitting for the quiet village, but this person seems to be quite adept at setting up stage things in like a studio of sorts, you know, be it fruit or whatever, and drawing slash sketching them. Interesting. Um, Tessian will inquire who, uh, you know, who, who drew these, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, shopkeeper kind of perks up at that. He is a middle-aged, at least by elvish standards, elf. Um, Introduces himself as Elijah. Says, well, actually, I did. I don't know if I'm the best, necessarily, but something I kind of do on the side, and every now and then they sell okay. I must compliment you. Your work is, is quite fine. Is there any particular reason you've chosen this subject at all? Well, it's about all you can find inside the city, and I don't know, I don't don't have much of an interest in heading out. You know, some people have that spirit of adventure, but me, I, I'm safe here and I'm happy here, so it's whatever I can try and find that's different or stands out in the town. Um, and Tessian's kind of thinking for a second. He's like, you wouldn't by chance have gotten any uh, drawings of uh, Dragonborn or anything of the sort, would you? And he thinks about it for a minute and he goes... You know, there was one that passed through a while back. Let me see. And he kind of flips through some of the books that are not readily on display. Um, and eventually comes across one, kind of pulls it out and flips through it real quick. And sure enough, he shows you a page with a dragonborn on it. Can't tell what color. because It's black and white sketch. Um, but he says, this was one where... I asked permission first because I, I didn't want to seem impolite, but I, I, I asked if he would not mind me drawing him for a moment if he had some spare time in town because 
It's not often you get to see Dragonborn around here, but that was probably nine or ten months ago. It was a while back. Uh, and Tessian, uh, what color was it? Red? Blue? I think it was some shade of red, yes. Reddish brown, perhaps. It was somewhere around there. Hmm. I wish I was more adept with coloring, or I, that was one I would have definitely added it to, but I really just kind of sketch. Uh, he didn't happen to mention why he was in town or anything, uh, did he? He didn't. I, I didn't want to ask too many questions since I felt I was imposing just taking his time to sketch him in the first place, but I just thought it was too cool of a chance to pass up. Of course, of course. Um, how much for the book, if you don't mind? And he kind of like looks at the back spine of it real quick, and he says, this one's just five silver. There's not that many good drawings in it, to be honest. The Dragonborn's a standout, but the rest of them are all, I don't know, not my best work. I've gotten a lot better since then. And Tessie nods, and uh, he kind of looks at Thea. He's like, uh, any, do you want any? I figure I'll get this for Karash, uh, something for the road, perhaps? She thinks about it for a second, and she's trying to think of something that he'll have that <laughs> will be of interest to her, so she can't be like, do you have any wyverns? Yeah. <laughs> have there been wyverns in the town? No? Well? Um, but after she kind of thinks about it for a second, she does seem to... She gravitates towards one of the ones that's on display that has a couple more still lifes in it and offers to purchase that one. He quotes her for three silver for that one. It's even less interesting overall, but it seems like she kind of just wants to support the guy because <laughs> uh, uh, it's sort of a thing and, she likes to do as well. Uh, Tessie's just going to toss him a gold for the two. Okay. So she kind of puts her money away as she goes to pull for it and... That's kind of why he's buying this. I mean, the picture he thinks is kind of worthless, but maybe it'll be useful. So, yeah. And again, it's decent art. Yeah. By no means phenomenal, but good. It's not like you're like, I just bought a children's book. Yeah. Um, Elijah's very appreciative, especially since you, you know, overcharged, essentially. Um, he says, I thank you. It, it's nice to make a sale. You know, it doesn't do the best out here, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. Just say, well, no problem, and it's always good to see fellow artists at work, uh, selling their wares and such. And I don't often get to meet others, so I appreciate it. Thank you. A fellow artist, you say? So, well, I mean, yes, I, I, you know, I dabble a little. Uh, Thea as well, and he kind of motions to Thea. Um, and they say, I, if you'd like to see, I mean, I could always... I could, <laughs> show some of my work, I suppose. This, this fake humility. Um, <laughs> and he seems very enthusiastic about it. He's like, of course, I, I would like to. Uh, well, uh, of course. And he'll kind of just rummage for his journal and you know, show off a few of the things, of course. And uh, there's the p few pictures that Thea has drawn in there. He'll, he'll show those off as well. You know, He seems kind of awestruck um, and a little bit down. Despite having just made a sale, he's also kind of like, ah, oh, shit, like, this is definitely out of my league. He even kind of makes a point of being like, the, see, this, this, the noses, that's, you have it down to a science. I, I struggle with those sometimes. I, they just don't seem to come out correctly. It's, it's just practice, my friend, you know. Uh, your te technique and everything, it'll come to you. It's just a matter of getting it onto the page and, and working at it, of course. Uh, just time. That's all it is. Well, I have seen some improvements. I, I hope to get to your level someday. I, I thank you for showing me. Yes, no, uh, the difference between uh, this book here and uh, this one here, it's, it's, you'll get there, I'm, a sh I'm sure. You can even kind of tell just from having seen his stuff. Like He has improved a decent amount in the last nine months, so like that's not even damning praise. It's legitimately yeah. like he's getting better. He just has not done it a long time from the looks of it. So. It tells you, it's like I will. I will suggest, however, though, you know, you may always decide to. Uh, it may be useful to get out a little bit, um, take in something new. Maybe a new perspective will help um, add some shapes and uh, something to your repertoire. He kind of nods. He says, "Well, I suppose if I could get a companion to go with me, it would be safer, and it would be nice to see some new faces. I, I've sketched them near everybody in the town who's willing to let me by this point." And, uh, just, well, I appreciate your time, of course. Uh, we've got some other shopping to do for the evening, but uh, uh, I, I bid you uh, farewell and, and hope things go well for you and your art. Well, I thank you, sir, and 
Please stop by again if you're in the area. Of course, of course. By this point, Isaac and Karash, you are also on the street. It's not a very large street, or there's not that many shops, so you can see Tessie and Thea engaged with this person who's selling drawings of some kind, as well as the other shops that were described before. Yeah, I don't know. We need to go. I I would be looking for certain things that we can talk about later. Um, equipment for the gun that I'm trying to build, and then maybe a book or two. But yeah, I'm just asking around about people seeing Dragonborn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and have both of you make a charisma check. Straight charisma. Straight charisma because Ooh. Streetwise doesn't exist anymore. Uh, critical. <laughs> Critically nice. awesome. Originally found someone selling the gun. I was trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your dad. <laughs> I don't have glasses on. I heard you are asking oh, about no. me. Hello, son. You want this gun? You'll have to take <laughs> it from me. <laughs> Bye. Will that be his voice if when he shows up? Probably not. I have one in mind for him. <laughs> um, not that he's going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Uh, five for Karash. For the most part, uh, you get pretty quick responses, Karash. Not that people are off-put by you or anything or being brusque with you. Just in general, people are like, no, can't really remember having seen any blue dragonborn in the area recently. Sorry. And they kind of keep going about their way. Um, Isaac, the weapon shop does not have any guns. But as you're kind of just getting a feel for what's going on and what, you know, where you might be able to find supplies, the thing that you do get out of this person, which is not readily available knowledge, but on a crit, what the hell, is that they don't sell the pieces for guns in the town because the only people who are supposed to have them are Lorene's personal guard. Oh, bullshit. So it's, a it's an extra way to help ensure security in that they are the only ones who are supposed to have them. There are a handful of other folks in town who do, but they don't make them readily available so that anybody can just come by and be like, hey, I have guns too, blam, 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 blam. So you get an extra bit of information out of it at the very least. Okay. But no gunpowder, no gun pieces or anything of the like, unfortunately, because in this town especially, it is not meant to be available. Because that's how they keep things safe. Shopping excursion all done. Yeah, I mean, there's really, if nothing else stands out, then yeah, just head back to the inn for the evening. So Thea kind yeah. of links arms with you and kind of leans on your shoulder as you head back to the uh, the moratorio, the inn. Um, you guys have rooms. The rooms are nice, by the way. Um, despite the fact that there's not a lot going on in the downstairs area, all the rooms have nice large beds. They seem comfortable. Um, there's one big one in the room that you have for you and Thea. There's two smaller ones, but still like queens at littlest for Isaac and Karash. So seems like it'll be a good night's sleep. Anything else you guys are doing before the evening? I'm not really I'm making the best of the evening, I guess just, you know, talking or, or whatever, but uh, yeah, Tessie doesn't have much else he has planned. So well, I want to ask Tessie something just. Oh, okay. Quick. Uh, Tessie and I, I had an idea, and I want you to tell me just how absurd it is. It's probably very absurd, but continue. Well, I think you will uh, come to that conclusion, but uh, it occurred to me that it would be worth checking the bank to see if my father has made a deposit here. If he did, it might be something that would be worth us finding. Uh, you can only... <sighs> Uh, make a uh, make a withdrawal, or even find out if who the clients are. If you are the person who made the deposit, which makes sense, it occurs to me that we have someone in our party who can maybe fudge identities a little bit in Grail. And I was wondering what you thought about pursuing this any further in the future. Testing things for a second, and uh, he's like, "Well, I'll admit it's a uh, it's a question that even I would like answered. However, I see two ways this goes: either there is something here, and we have to play along and potentially end up imprisoned for our ruse, or there is nothing there, 
and our ruse is caught even faster because we're asking for something that does not exist, and we end up imprisoned. I don't know that the answer to your question is worth the risk in this particular case, especially since I don't think your father would hide something of great importance here. Admittedly, it would be the perfect place to hide something if you didn't want people to expect it, um, but your father seems to have plenty of resources of his own and plenty of secrets of his own. I don't think he would need a place like this to store those things. I think you make a good point. I, it's probably not a thread worth pursuing anymore. I just, I wish we had the means to uh, do something unexpected, find something he was not planning on us finding. Uh, maybe this opportunity isn't it, but I hope another one presents itself soon. And it seems like I agree. It'd be nice to know. I just don't know that we have the uh, tools necessary to make it happen. Speaking of Grail and, and Lena, we should probably get back uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm sure they're fine. Uh, we left the farm in... Um, uh, it was a good situation, so... Uh, but uh, still, I think it would be best to get back, continue on the Cornetus. I agree. I, uh, I'll admit I, uh, I'm not looking forward to leaving, uh, to leaving Thea, but um, you're right. Hopefully Lena has found the time to meditate, and we have a direction to go. And, um, <laughs> well, the sooner the better. Okay. Meditate on this. She just, like, burns a body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Tessie, and uh, have a good night. Uh, you as well. Oh, and uh, and he reaches, I don't know, he's got the book. He pulls the book out, and it's probably, like, got a page, the page set. He's like, yeah, this is all I could find as far as Dragonborn. I'm sure it's not really helpful. Um, but uh, this, uh, the artist around here, local man, uh, draws people he saw. This was the Dragonborn that uh, the bartender had mentioned earlier. And he'll show Isaac a picture. Uh, okay. Red, a uh, red, not blue, unfortunately. But who knows? Maybe it's it's worth knowing. Well, at least we can verify that more than one person saw this dragonborn. Um, I'll let Crash know, and we'll see if anything comes of it. But uh, this is uh, good. Thank you. Yeah, and it gives you the book in case Crash seeing it might mean something. Okay, cool. Yeah. As you guys take the time to have this conversation, Thea goes to Crash, and talks to him in Draconic for a bit. Sort of explains that maybe it'll help him feel a little less away from home. And if it's easier to talk to her this way, she's happy to do it as well. As she, She's not as quite as well-versed in it as she is in common, but she can certainly hold a conversation. Cool. Uh, I'll uh, just kind of talk to her about uh, uh, her and, and, and uh, I guess, her and Tessian's relationship. <laughs> which she's happy to go into details on, but she doesn't catch it without at least checking with you one more time to make sure you're all right, and that you're happy with the fact that you saw your mother and all that jazz, you know, kind of kind of hand-wavy stuff. But in general, just check it um, in, making sure you have a chance to converse in your original tongue. I'm very stoic. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I don't have feelings. Don't worry about it. Nope, no <clears throat> feelings. Very manly. Yeah, haven't you cried like twice today? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, <clears throat> as our group readies for... A night's sleep of some sort, some better than others, at two different spots in this part of the countryside. And the smell of burning flesh still lingering in one of them. <laughs> we will leave off there. No cliffhanger this time. Just a regular old, it's night time. Tomorrow, the group may reconvene. And when they do so, we'll see what awaits them on the next leg of their journey on the Anachroschism. <laughs>